after four or five decades these craters are still relatively deep and I don't know if you can tell but the dirt that was thrown out of the hole is still very very much visible I don't this obviously was not a uh, plantation during the bombing but uh, yeah this one's a little bit off and we're I'm about five or ten kilometers from the Vietnam border There's a mix of people here and I saw this patch of green that was in a rice field or a plantation again I'm not sure if this is a plantation or not uh, but man there are uh, I'd say between 20 and 30 craters still here and I've been on the yeah, here's another one I'll go down in this one this one's pretty shallow oh, oh. get up here's another one here's this one's there are some really, really big ones. I, I mean, and they're, uh, it's a symmetrical circle, some of them. And again, the dirt is thrown out. Here's another one where the dirt is still visible on the outside. And you know they're bomb craters, again, because of the dirt thrown out on the side. So it'll come up. There'll be a bit of a, a, a lip before it drops down. Contrary to belief, I mean, these were targets. Um, it wasn't just in, indiscriminate bombing like uh, a lot of uh, academia like to uh, spew. Uh, the, this was a target of some sort, again, really close to the Vietnam border. Uh, the Khmer actually traded with the VC and the NVA. And that's one reason why the Khmer didn't really fight back uh, against them. Uh, you know, Cambodia was then and still is relatively poor compared to Vietnam. And, uh, hey, whatever, they have the money. You want to buy some bananas? Want to buy a coconut? Sure, whatever. And also, this was borderless. Uh, it, there was The border came much later after... Uh, uh, the French left. So there really wasn't, it was a very porous border, almost no border.